Bamboo Labs has a new 3D printer, the P1P. Today, we put it through its paces and answer your questions. We've got a lot to get through, so let's start quickly. Bamboo Lab have sent me their new P1P for free so I can test it. This is a test, not a review, but Bamboo Lab have still agreed to the terms of my review policy, which means you'll hear about the good and bad of my experience. Recently, I put out a community post asking for your questions about this machine. There was a lot of great questions, so let's answer them. I think it makes sense to start with, what is the Bamboo Lab P1P? Well, it's a 3D printer, but to understand it, we need to go back to the Bamboo Lab X1. Launched on Kickstarter in the first half of 2022, it made a real splash with its incredibly high speed printing, which didn't compromise print quality, thanks to some clever design decisions and some innovations such as the micro LiDAR that could be used for self calibration. The top model X1 Carbon is $1200 US, putting it out of reach for some people. And that brings us to the P1P, a cut down version of the X1, retailing for $700 US dollars. If you want to learn more beyond this video, I've linked a couple of relevant blog posts in the description below. The next obvious question is, how is it the same and different from the X1? To answer this, let's have a look at the two side by side, P1P on the left and the X1 Carbon on the right. And as you can see, they are nearly identical, apart from the missing exterior panels. If we remove the glass lid from the X1 Carbon, we can see that the print heads are more or less the same, minus a cable chain for the P1P. Inside the P1P, we have the same part cooling system, extruder and hot end. The X1 Carbon only really has one major difference, which is the micro LiDAR, which we will discuss shortly. Both printers appear to have the same carbon rods, the same stamped sheet metal subframe, and the same three lead screw Z axis run from a single stepper. Both machines are compatible with the AMS or automatic material system that can be used for multi-material or multi-color printing. Differences include an extra fan on the back left of the X1. This is the fan for the active filtering system, whereas this compartment is empty on the P1P. The beds are also quite different, the P1P having a double-sided textured PEI coated sheet and the X1 coming with a double-sided sticker sheet that requires glue. You'd think they'd be interchangeable, but it says that the LiDAR is not compatible with the textured sheet if you were to use it inside the X1. Another key difference is the LCD and D-pad interface on the P1P. The X1 comes with a beautiful colored touchscreen. It shows previews of what you're printing, as well as allowing functionality like giving error codes and updating firmware straight from the LCD. The P1P's interface is a lot simpler and feels a little bit plain by comparison. However, it's mostly serviceable. The only thing I wish it had was some presets for heating and cooldown, as it gets really annoying to press this button at least 20 times anytime you want to do this task. It still does give you manual control over things like homing, turning on lights and fans, changing print speed presets, feeding filament through the hot end, and of course, starting prints on the SD card. Again, perfectly serviceable, just a little bit clunky at times. Other X1 features missing by default are the interior camera, the LED light bar, as well as the auxiliary fan, but these three items can be added as upgrades later on. A lot of people wanted to know whether the micro LiDAR being absent was a problem and whether they could add it later. Firstly, according to the FAQ, the LiDAR is not part of the P1P and cannot be upgraded later. So what does the LiDAR do in the X1 that we're missing out on here? Firstly, the P1P still has auto bed leveling. After heating up, purging filament, cooling and wiping the nozzle, the print head goes around probing the bed in a grid using a load cell built into the assembly. On the X1, the LiDAR is then used to scan the print area, so this secondary scanning is not available on the P1P, but my first layers were still perfect on every print I did, so I don't think this is a concern. Something else we miss out on is automatic flow rate and pressure advance calibration. The X1 would draw a pattern in the front of the print and then use the LiDAR to scan it. For the P1P, these values come from presets for each filament, and I'm told there will be a usable printable pattern and a way to tweak the result, but that's all the details I know. Finally, the X1 uses a LiDAR to check the first layer quality. After the initial layer is printed, the micro LiDAR goes back and forth scanning the surface and will alert the user if there's a problem, and the P1P can never have this functionality. 
Since you can't add the LiDAR later, you'll need to decide if this missing X1 functionality is a deal breaker for you. Another common question I had was how easy is this printer to use for beginners? To answer that, it seems like a good time to look at the unboxing and setup to see exactly what it takes to get printing. This machine came well packaged and without any damage. And to set it up, we follow a hard copy of the quick start guide included in the bundle. Some of the process involves removing packaging, in place to prevent movement and damage during shipping, likewise removing screws which hold the bed in place. The only actual assembly is bolting on the rear spool holder, the filament guide in the rear upper corner, and plugging in and slotting the display into place using the holes on the frame front. When you first power up, you'll have a series of idiot proof reminders to make sure you're actually ready to go. Getting the printer connected to your local network is easily done through the Bamboo Handy app, and you can then run the self-test where the printer will make sure everything is connected and working properly. When this is done, you can load up the included PLA filament, and then you can either select one of the pre-sliced models on the SD card, or add your printer in the Bamboo Lab Slicer software, as well as your filament, and for each of these, there's pre-made slicer profiles, which I used for all of my test prints in this video. And of course, when the file is sliced, you can click print and any machines on your local network will be recognized by the slicer and you can send the print job to them wirelessly. A lot of people wanted to know how the print quality was with various filaments, particularly with filaments that warp, since this is an open frame machine. Firstly, the pre-sliced Benchy, which looks to me pretty flawless. There's the typical bow line, which is not a fault of the printer. And the only other thing I can point out is a visible Z seam on the chimney where each layer started. On the front of the boat, we can see that the part cooling is quite good, details are crisp, and I would describe this Benchy as having zero stringing. This is all the more impressive considering how fast it was, more on that shortly. Also sliced on the SD card was this dino puzzle, which featured many small pieces, each of them nicely formed, and that made the puzzle easy to assemble. To test stringing detail as well as the grip of the bed, I sliced this chainmail from Flowalistic. The many intricate pieces of the first layer went down perfectly, and the rest of the print was completed flawlessly as well. The zero broken parts or stringing here, this is a really satisfying print, produced to a really high standard, and I highly recommend it. I had questions over layer stacking, so I printed this LED lens on its side, it needed to be white, and unfortunately that makes it very hard to show up defects. If we make the lighting as harsh as possible, we can see the stacked layers, but overall, I'd say this is on par with other high-end machines. I feel it's important to remind people that you're not locked into using Bamboo Lab filament. I printed this auxiliary fan support using the generic PLA profile, and once again, the result is quite good. I also tested PETG, which is no problem at all for this machine. Using the generic profile, it prints just as well as PLA. The TPU, I tested two types, with this Pikachu on the left being from the typical 95A. This profile would need a little bit of tuning to get rid of the stringing, but apart from that, it printed really well. For the Pikachu on the right, this was printed in Filiflex TPU, which is extremely soft and springy, with a sure hardness of 82A. When you select the generic TPU profile in the slicer, you can see that the print speed is automatically slowed down, and that means even really soft TPUs like this can be printed without any special attention. Some extra tuning to remove stringing would be necessary here, but the machine is capable nonetheless. Filaments that easily warp is something I regularly use the X1 for, where the special bed with glue stick and enclosed chamber does a great job. I tried the exact same print with an ambient temperature of 20 degrees, but as you can see, the ASA started to warp and lift off the bed, and soon after, it completely dislodged and left me printing spaghetti. Though the hardware of the P1P can handle these filaments, any potential warping will depend on the geometry, just like any other open frame machine. I mentioned earlier that the P1P is also compatible with the AMS. To use it, we fit these printable brackets, which slide inside the base of the AMS, pop the AMS with brackets on top of the P1P, the AMS's buffer screws onto the back of the P1P frame. The control cable plugs into the back of the P1P, as does the filament output tube. When you next power on the machine, the AMS will be automatically detected. Then back in the slicer, we add in additional filaments, set their type and color, load in a multi-part model, and then apply the filaments that we want. If you want to see more of this in action, check out my X1 video, 
but the filaments will be loaded and unloaded as necessary throughout the print with everything such as purging and purge blocks taken care of automatically. All of this filament purging is quite wasteful, but printing with the AMS gives really clear and reliable color separation compared to other multicolor methods. Unfortunately, this print failed halfway through, more on that later. Finally, I printed this PLA articulated axolotl using the generic PLA profile. And for me, it's another good looking print. It's also worth noting that any support material automatically configured from Bamboo Slicer is very easy to separate, even without the use of tools. Some people wanted to know what makes this printer so fast, and how does that compare to other popular printers, such as those from Voron, Ratrig, and Secit. How fast is fast? Well, that Benji from earlier completed in just over 20 minutes. And if you don't understand how impressive that is, especially for a stock printer out of the box, here's some footage of the early layers going down. This is not sped up, this is in real time, and this is a default print speed for any hard filament when using this machine. The formula for this printer's intense speed is exactly the same as those I just mentioned. Let's very quickly run through the list. Firstly, it uses Core XY kinematics, and I have a previous video explaining why this is beneficial. The print head and other moving components are as light as possible. The hot end can flow up to 32mm cubed per second, and this is matched with a powerful part cooling fan. And Bamboo run an equivalent of Clipper's input shaping to cancel out vibration and allow high acceleration and speeds. And the combination of these features does the trick. A very common question was about this printer's upgradability and whether it could be converted to X1 spec. We already know that we can't add the micro LiDAR later on, and we also can't add the X1's color touchscreen. We can, however, add the X1's camera, LED light bar, and auxiliary cooling fan. Printed parts are available for this, as well as PDF instructions, so let's install these parts. Of all of these, the camera is the easiest, clipping into the metal frame, and then the adhesive backed ribbon cable sticks to the side of the frame, and then the end slots into a connector on the back of the LCD electronics board. This is automatically detected on power on, allowing you to stream to the slicer or the mobile app. The LED light bar clips into a printed housing, a printed lens then slides in from the side, padded double sided tape is then used to stick this assembly on the inside upper part of the frame, and the cable plugs into the back of the LCD. Operation is from the app slicer or the LCD. Again, no software or firmware changes required. Finally, the auxiliary fan which uses a printed adapter. We pull the rubbers from the bottom of the fan, slide it into the adapter, and then use a couple of bolts to hold it in place. The adapter slots into some notches on the bottom of the machine before being screwed into position, and the top of the fan is bolted in as well. To plug this one in, we need to take the back electronics cover off and insert it into the mainboard port labeled Fan 2. Again, it'll work without any software or firmware changes. We also have a pathway for customizing the exterior panels. There's a range of designs that will be available in a couple of days to download and print, or you could generate your own custom design as Bamboo Lab did for me with this TT housing. There's six panels per side and they're pressed into place or perhaps persuaded with a thwack. Each side is then lifted and slotted onto the outer frame before being secured with a series of screws on the front, back and inside. I found it hard to get the fit perfect and there is around 25 hours worth of printing per side, but overall I still really like this customization idea. As for enclosing the rest of the printer, it wouldn't be hard to laser cut some acrylic or cardboard to make a lid. A front door would be trickier, but there are holes on the frame where nuts and bolts could attach one. Finally, it's worth discussing this box as seen in a Bamboo Lab blog post. This is an add-on extension board that allows you to plug in things such as LED strips, fans, camera controls, and other items, and can be controlled via G-code. That's all I know about it at the moment, but it seems like a positive. Some people wanted to know about reliability and spare parts. I've only had this for a week, and I can't predict the future about longevity, but since the P1P is based on the X1, you would hope that any physical problems have already been discovered and fixed for the P1P. In terms of software, I had two mystery failed prints. This AMS print stopped halfway, giving me a warning message, but I was unable to find this code on the wiki. The second one just froze and I have no idea why, but I've passed on the details to Bamboo Lab and hopefully they can get to the bottom of it. For spare parts, you can browse the Bamboo Lab store to see the prices and availability for the various consumables on this machine. 
This includes things like the bed, spare hot ends, and even the glass lid and front door in case you wanted to adapt them to the P1P. People asked, is this suitable for an office or a school, namely how loud is this? Unfortunately, printing this fast comes with a cost in volume, and this is mainly down to the very strong part cooling fans. The stepper motor drivers are silent, but when you're moving this fast, you're going to hear them no matter what. And this printer is still way less obtrusive than the noisy stepper motor drivers that 3D printers used to come with. <laughs> Finally, why is there so much buzz around this printer? What makes it stand out from the competition? The way I see it, these are the P1P's main selling points. It has easy setup and calibration, it prints really fast but still with good quality, we have an ecosystem with their own filament, their own slicer, and a lot of pre-made profiles. It's easy to connect to the internet, and most importantly, it just works. Given this, I think its closest competitor is the Prusa Mark 3S Plus. But even in a kit form that you need to assemble yourself, the Mark 3S Plus is 100 US dollars more. For a long time, Prusa has been dominant in offering their own slicer, their own filaments, and a bunch of pre-made profiles to make life easy and now they have a serious competitor at the same price point. However, there is a difference in philosophy, with Prusa offering the entire printer and software chain open source, and Bamboo Lab only having their slicer Bamboo Studio open source because it's based on Prusa Slicer. Because of this, some people will want to be loyal towards Prusa and its RepRap philosophy origins, because the construction and design of the Bamboo Lab machines is much more like a home appliance than something you tinker with and it's this focus on high volume manufacturing techniques that allows them to make their printers as affordable as they are. I know some people were worried about being stuck on the cloud functionality of this ecosystem, but as I proved with the X1, you can slice G-code on any other slicer, provided you have the start and end G-code for the advanced functions. You can also avoid the cloud by saving your sliced prints to the SD card and starting them from the LCD. For most people, however, this machine will be attractive because you'll receive the performance and smarts of something like a Voron without the need to assemble it yourself and for much less cost. Everyone I've spoken to that got their hands on an X1 seems to agree that the Kickstarter launch was smooth and successful, so he's hoping the P1P can have the same type of success. While not perfect, this has been an impressive 3D printer. I'd love to know if it's something you're considering and the reasons why or why not. Hopefully I've been able to shape this video to answer the questions that you gave me. So thanks for asking them. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.